Boy understanding masculinity through a very feminine sport? Check. Map as cleanest motion capture yet? Check. Dramatic retellings of classical ballet with a fresh perspective? Check. Dance Dance Dancer delivers on all angles. With dramatic storytelling, a passionate and conflicted lead, and a dramatic love triangle, the series Dance Dance Dancer really highlights something that we're missing a lot in anime right now. Welcome anime friends, grab your cup because it's time to spill the anime tea. Today we're going to be diving into the crazy dancing world of Dance Dance Dancer, why you should watch it, and what sets it apart from other series in its same demographic and genre. Let's begin. So let's give Dance Dance Dancer, or I will also call it DDD, which kind of sounds similar to King DDD. So essentially, the story follows Junpei, who falls in love with ballet at a young age, but due to pressures to look and be masculine and the death of his father, who was actually a stuntman, he decides to learn martial arts instead and follow in his footsteps. But in his first year of high school, he meets a girl that rekindles his love for ballet and dancing, as well as feelings for her. Thrust into the world of ballet as a beginner, way past the desired age range, he learns the true meaning of love, manlyhood, and rivalry. And I'm going to particularly break down some aspects of the show that may make you want to watch it. So if you are a fan who loved the series Welcome to the Ballroom and wish there were more seasons, wants to see a fiery rivalry that brings out the best and worst in each of the main characters, love beautifully choreographed dance sequences on par with other MAPPA works like Yuri on Ice, and of course you have to love a little bit of an angsty teen romance drama or else you're just not going to like the series because about half the series kind of follows an angsty teen love, love triangle dynamic and we're going to get into that. Don't click away just because you heard love triangle. It's not that bad. <laughs> And I want to particularly talk to you, like my shoujo fans out there, my manga readers, my anime adaptation lovers. I want to talk to you guys real quick, like look me in the eye real quick. This series is for y'all. It is for us. It is for people who love a series like that and don't get to see it animated because I made a whole video on that that you can watch of the reason why. It's honestly surprising that this series is a seinen series and it's actually made for young adult men. And the reason that this is surprising is because series targeted at the same demographic usually don't look like this. This, I think more now, I'm starting to see in more seinen ser series and manga magazines particularly, that series are starting to look more like this, which is why we're getting adaptations. But it's weird because there are series that look like this in shoujo manga and magazines as well that we don't get. So it just makes me sad regardless. But let's talk about what sets DDD apart from other series in the same demographic and genre, even from other dancing anime, really. The first and foremost, of course, is the beautiful art style, which can be credited to the mangaka George Asakura, who just really captured the body and essence of a dancer in their art style. I love that the characters have these giant doe eyes, like literally caught in the headlights. They're beautiful, gorgeous. Also, I love that the characters have limbs for days, like their legs and arms and like necks go like to heaven. It's dancing, It's the point is to show off these dancers' bodies and how like they tone them and use them for ballet. MAPPA likes to keep their ish super clean and like perfected and let me tell you when I say that this show is clean as heck every line movement is perfect even when they kind of blur the movements to add personality to the dancers and how they dance and give it like a fluid look the lines are always crisp but like these characters are always apart from their background and it looks incredible every time what the animation studio did keep from the manga is the colors, like these really subtle pastel blues and pinks and purples that kind of appear in the characters' clothing and in the background and um, in the little sparkles when, you know, Junpei gets, sees something and is passionate about it. And I love that they kept those little aspects because it gives it just a little bit more life. Speaking of really clean motion capture and animation, I think that the choreography of the series is beautiful and I think they did a great job in choosing Naoya Homan, who is the choreographer for most of the major dance sequences of the series. Like literally the first like two to three minutes of the series, we see like this dancer on stage who has like incredible stage presence that 
Junpei as a kid sees and what makes him what, fall in love with ballet. And the way that they animated that, the way that they choreographed that, really just brought an excitement to the series in like under five minutes that I haven't seen in a lot of other or like simulcast brand new anime in a long time. I love that this scene even caught the attention of like a principal ballet dancer in uh, the New York Ballet dance, the choreography for that sequence. All this to say though, that I'm really glad that MAPPA and the team behind animating this show, the series, really did put a lot of work and effort into making it look clean and beautiful. Despite it being a motion capture, they have the dancer wear these, this like technology that helps them capture their movements and then recreate them in 3D and then cover them up with 2D animation. They made sure to not just leave like the raw 3D imaging files of it like I've seen in other anime, unfortunately. They really did make sure to give it a lot of personality and life, a little bit of blur, a little bit of sweat flying all over the place, little pops of color and life, which even stands out from an episode in Attack of Titan season four, where they did a motion capture to kind of give some of the characters a little bit of liveliness. It still felt really weird, uh, clunky to me to watch those scenes. But in this, because the 3D scenes were almost entirely used for dancing and they were able to like incorporate it so well into the dancing sequences. It felt so natural. I couldn't even tell that like what was 3D and what was just fluid animation. Which leads to the next point, which is attention to detail. Ballet is a very detail oriented sport. It, it requires a lot of attention to very little minute things, body postures, the uh, like character acting and things like that. I'm not a ballet dancer. I have done ballet for like a year in my life. I was not very good at it. From my very novice perspective, it looks great. I love that they just added so much emphasis on the little tiny details of ballet dancing. And a lot of people, I think, initially compared the series to Welcome to the Ballroom, which is another anime about dancing. It's actually about ballroom dancing though, but ballroom dancing and ballet dancing have some similarities and things in common, such as you know the postures of the characters, elongated necks and arms and limbs and hands, postures and positioning and things like that. Even in Welcome to the Ballroom, they also had like really big eyes and there was like a little sparkle of color and sweat. If you look at the kind of the sequences and the art style of both of them, they are very similar. And I think that's just because they're both about dancing and both of those types of dancing require a lot of emphasis on particular postures, especially the elegance of those postures. And when I say that DDD really embodies like the epitome of <laughs> like it really does ballet also requires a lot of emphasis on particular angles and shapes and how dancers really have to master the exact angles diameters like literal math of how to position their bodies in order to do a correct pirouette in order to do correct dances jumps movements even stretches are very like measured this show if it was really just about like true actual ballet would would probably be a little bit boring because ballet is so tedious repetitive and particular that you might get bored to seeing the character do the same thing over and over and over again but this is literally what dancers do in order to get better at their craft so what i like about the series what like makes it different is that there is a character who is really passionate about dancing he doesn't know how to dance correctly according to like ballet standards Standards, but he loves to dance and he kind of just goes along with the rhythm instead of along with the timing and that's what makes it fun even though he's kind of learning to control himself and do things that should be correct for classical ballet as he's slowly falling more and more in love with the idea of classical ballet there's still parts of him that break through and make him shine but I love that there's a rival character Luo who is there and is kind of an example, like a foil almost, of Junpei's like more passionate approach. He is very meticulous. He has his whole life been taught to do things a certain way and he does things that way only. So I love that there's this dynamic of these two characters that are approaching ballet in two different ways. Speaking of two different characters and rivalries, I can't not mention the tricky 
angsty teen love triangle that exists in this show. It doesn't really take up the first like three to four episodes, but after episode five, we really get introduced to Luo and his relationship with Miyako and Junpei understanding like Miyako a little bit more and who she likes and all this kind of stuff. It gets a little bit angsty. And it's really easy to kind of mark this off as just another angsty teen drama when it gets to that point. But honestly, if you stick with it to the very end, which I think people should do, you're gonna get rewarded with amazing character growth. Love triangles should mostly be a way to help us understand each of the characters a little bit better and help them go through a little bit of growth themselves. And I think for Junpei and Luo, they go through incredible growth. Miyako, who's the main girl in between like this love triangle, she doesn't go through that much growth and I kind of wish more for her, but without giving anything away. Junpei having to decide between like his love and his youth and dance and kind of making strides in getting becoming a better dancer and also understanding himself compared with Luo who went through a really tragic story and is really struggling with his own identity and like who he is and what type of dancer that he is when his whole life he was told that he was someone else. So they both get incredible character growth. And I can't not address this because it gets talked about in all the conversations that I looked up about the show. But yes, the main love interest, Miyako and Luo, the main rival are first cousins and they kind of like each other. But, but don't let that deter you because it is weird and I do not condone. Unfortunately, this is a really common trope archetype in a lot of anime. You know, there's other aspects where it's like sisters, mothers, cousins. It's something you kind of either have to ignore in order to continue liking the show, or it sometimes gets to the point where you just can't ignore it. I don't think this show does it to a really like suggestive, concerning type of way to me personally. There are other romantic elements that are brought up in a more wholesome way overshadow kind of this aspect. Just for that one thing, I, I will give it a negative one, but everything else is positive 100. However, there's one other thing that I need to mention. One other thing that bothers me despite the series being so great and awesome, and it's the fact that it's more common that we're gonna get stories like this where we get to see like a male lead character kind of do something unconventional and be in ballet and do something that's not normally considered normal for young boys but we don't really get to see the opposite end like we don't get to see stories that are similar to this in like shoujo series girls doing this or other people who are able to kind of break out and do something interesting also provide a fresh perspective on a sport on a topic that has been talked about a lot maybe not that much in anime because there's not that much ballet anime in particular a lot of people know of ballet so providing new perspective on a topic that everyone knows is important i'm i just wish there was more fresh perspectives from other POVs that aren't just the same type of characters every time. Anyway, sorry to end on a slightly sour note. This is actually a lead into a video that I made, which you can find somewhere up here, where I talk about the kind of dying world of romance shoujo anime and why that is and why we're not getting as many adaptations. And yeah, please check that out if you want to learn more about that topic. As always, my name is Phoenix and this has been The Anime Tea, where I dive into the world of visual storytelling in anime and sometimes manga on a weekly basis. If you want more videos like this, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next one. Watch Dance Dance Dancer and have a good time. See you in the next one. Peace!